There's a story in the Bible. Jesus heals a, a blind man. And his uh, disciples ask him, was he blind because of sin, of his parents' sin? And Jesus said, uh, no. He was blind for the glory of God. He was blind so that Jesus could heal him. And when he became a man, he met Jesus, and Jesus healed him of his blindness. And that could also mean spiritually for us, right? You could have been born spiritually blind, and <clears throat> you could have been born with some handicap, right? Spiritual handicap, physical handicap. You might ask God, was, does that have to do with some type of sin that I had or my parents had? And maybe it was not. Maybe it was for the glory of God. And when you do get healed, or if your children got healed of this handicap or physical problem, mental problem, whatever it may be, and let's say you had to actually suffer for a long time with it, right? Or maybe when, maybe if, um, maybe you're a parent and your child or children, they have a handicap or they have a, a shortcoming and you suffered, they suffered, maybe they got bullied, maybe they, they didn't get to do what, you know, normal kids would have done. And then one day God heals them. Maybe the healing doesn't come until they are an adult. Would you be angry at God? Would you be angry when you have to go through it? When you find out you now have to go through it, right? What if you had a child that was born blind? What if you have a child that was born handicapped or with some problems, physical problems, and now you got to go through doctors and medical bills and all kinds of stuff? And would you be angry at God at that moment when you're going through those stuff? Now, some people have different degrees, right, of, of suffering or what they have to go through. Would you get angry? This is a rhetorical question. You don't have to answer me right now, but I want you to answer yourself. Would you get angry? Would you be offended at God? Why, what had I done? Why are you doing this to me? And Jesus said to the blind man, or Jesus said to the disciples regarding the blind man, he was blind, not because of sin, but for the glory of God. There is a cripple guy at the pool, right? I think it's Bethel, the pool. That's how you pronounce it. He's a cripple. He's there for years. And, and, and when the angel comes and, and stirs the water, the first one who goes into the water gets healed. But he's crippled. So he can't make it. He's always there. He's been there for years. And he's just hoping that someone pushes him or he gets in there somehow, right? And he can't. But Jesus comes and heals him. There's other incidents, right? Where Jesus heals somebody and then he says, sin no more. Or it'll be worse. The Bible says that Jesus didn't come to condemn. He tells the lady, you know, the Pharisees and the, and the elders bring the, you know, the lady prostitute or whoever you may think she is. Some people think she's married. Some people think she's just a prostitute or an adulterer or somebody, right? Maybe it doesn't matter. But they bring her and they're like testing the Lord. And he's like, you know, he ignores them and said, the one without sin may cast the first stone. And of course, they all leave. And then he asks the lady, where are your accusers? And she says, there are none. And he says, neither do I accuse you. And he gives a command, do not sin no more. As I look at the ladies dancing today, and as I feel the anointing and presence of God, and some of them feel it, and some of you guys are feeling it, when you're in that moment, and you're feeling God, I know in your heart and in your mind, 
you want to stop sinning. Some of somebody or some people may be in more of a severe sin. There are others you might have, you know, your irregular sin that you deal with, but there's other sin that is highlighted, right? That society highlights that is very obvious and that doesn't flow with the church on the outside, of course. But if you come to God's house and you feel the anointing and presence you want to repent. You want to stop. And in that moment, you're like, oh, you, f- you see, that's the love you feel from God, okay? God's love, just by being in His presence, you just want to stop sinning. You just want to be with Him and continue this feeling right or this moment and you want it to go deeper of course and you're like you may even say to yourself I'm never going to do that again whatever you did and then church ends right then you go home and you're like back to what you were doing you lost the feeling you lost the presence, you lost the anointing, whatever you, you think you had, right? It's not there anymore. And, and because if it was there on you, you'll be like, oh, you know, you think you got power and you got the, uh, the grace to like say no, uh, no to everything. Because it's just, you know, you got God. Just like, oh, you God. But then, you know, we go home, like I said, and war occurs again. Life, flesh, temptation. How do we get out of this cycle? I had, I was trying to think, you know, I have a couple things that I wanted to preach about. Nothing for sure. But as Kalia speaking, maybe I should bounce off that. Let's bring up Job. Job 33 I had, right? Listen, I'm going to just read it and I'll comment on it. Uh, I'll let Pastor Eugene pull it up first. Kalia, Kalia is 20. I don't have to tell her to pray. She prays on her own. I hear her. Evelyn is um, 18. I hear, she, her room is next to mine, actually next to the bathroom my bathroom, so I I can hear her. I hear her practice singing. I hear her playing the instruments. I hear her and David talking late at night too. I hear her praying. I hear Kalia because she's loud. You know, she's more loud. David's on the other side, so I don't know what he's doing. He's 16. But if I don't pray, if my, if, the, if my kids don't see my wife and I pray, my kids are not going to pray. Even if I tell them, hey, are you praying? And they don't hear us praying, they're not going to pray. If they don't see us reading, they're not going to read. Whatever, they're, we're, they're watching us, you see. And so you can't demand something on your children if you yourself are not doing this. They're going to mimic you. And then I just have to look at your children to see what you're doing. Your children are a reflection of the parents, really, right? I'm not saying it's 100% uh, you know, on cue, but, but it is, there is, you'll see a, a, a pattern there. So I, I hear Kalia pray, and, and a lot of times she'll try to get you know, Evelyn and David to pray together. And uh, when I go, you know, Kalia's the female version of Noah. Her animals, they follow her. We have one dog and two cats, right? And they just like, it's amazing. The cat acts like a dog. And, the, and they just follow Kalia, right? And, and they want to sleep with her. All the cats want to sleep with her in her room. Or all the animals, right? They want to sleep with her in her room. And if the door's closed, they're just at the door. Like, 
right? It's like they know who their leader is or they know who their you know owner is and they just they just gravitate towards Kalia. And Kalia's very good to the animals, right? I'm I, I could care less really. <laughs> like, go leave all this cat hair everywhere. Pastor Eugene likes the animals too. I don't like the animals. I'm indifferent, okay? <laughs> and uh, anyway, I, I hear them. I hear, uh, I go into Kalia's room and I see her artwork. She, she draws and I see the hours they, she puts in. And I hear Evelyn and I hear, Evelyn is, um, she's not too confident of her voice. And I keep telling her, it's not about what you think. You just got to keep doing it, right? Keep doing it and let God come through. I'm reading this book, right, by Benny Hinn. And he, he said that when, you know, I do read books from different pastors and whatnot just to get their angles because they do get new revelation. Benny Hinn, you know, he fell into a trap or he, he got into some trouble and he was like, the story was, I think he was dating another woman. He got into a divorce. But he's back with his wife, his original wife. When he used to go to conferences, he would send his team into the hotel rooms and remove all the pictures, turn off all the TVs, and even remove anything that looks worldly or demonic so he can protect his anointing. He also learned that as before he speaks in the conferences, if he talks to people, his anointing is affected. So he would actually stay away from the crowd for like hours before he speaks, just to not to get their influence on him. And I know this is true too, right? Because sometimes when I walk in church and there's bad apples with bad attitude, it's going to affect my spirit and it's going to affect how we minister to God. And God's not going to have that, you know. And when we come on Sunday, all of you should be in a good mood. If you're not in a good mood, you should still act it. Amen? You got to still act it so you don't affect other people. I know your life isn't always easy, you know. But there's been days where my wife and I, we've had a, in the last 10 years, there was a few Sundays we, we went at it. Maybe you don't know because we're really good at that, right? And, uh, and that's good then. I can't come into God's house. Now, I'm fighting my mood, all right? I'm fighting it desperately. I can't come up here. Ah! That's the Lord. You know, I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm up here and I don't want to get struck or something, right? I, I, I have that reality thought. It's part of the dying process. You have to. You have to fight it. You can't just come up. You, oh, whatever. I, whatever. I, 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 you can't do, I can't do that. No leaders can do that either. You can't do well, whatever. I, I, I can't control my mood. No, that's unacceptable. You know, art, music. Evelyn's going to study music when she goes to college, of course. And, and Kalia is in art class and it's not that they're taking those because people perceive it to be easy because it's not easy okay maybe not a lot of people study those things because it's maybe actually harder than it is right but they they're studying those because that's that's the path for them for God right Kalia's going to draw for God and Evelyn's going to worship for God and those aren't you know, God is a, God's a creator. He creates things. Most people want their children to go be a doctor or, or a lawyer. Most Koreans do. Because it's about the money. Not about living for God. And they're going to get constantly attacked. Right? We're all going to get constantly attacked. And you have to, you're battling every day. You're going to go home and battle. I have to put out so much fires, little fire here, little fire there, you know, I have, we have, my wife and I have to put them out because if we don't put them out, it's going to get big and it's going to destroy families or destroy people. And, and those fires are started by the end, uh, by people or the enemy through the people 
with words, innuendos, manipulation. And we all have to, you, have, you all have to be aware of yourself, all right? That you could be used, you're going to be used by two, two people, God or the, or the devil. And we don't want to go after people per se, but people, we have to go to the people, right? To get to the spiritual realm. Because you are being influenced by either the spirit of the Lord or the spirit of the enemy. Amen. Um, here in Job 33, let me read it. Listen, okay, so Elihu is talking to Job. Listen to my words, Job. Pay attention to what I have to say. Now that I have begun to speak, let me continue. I speak with all sincerity. I speak the truth. For the Spirit of God has made me, and the breath of Almighty gives me life. Answer me if you can. Make your case and take your stand. Look, you and I both belong to God. I, was, I too was formed from clay. So you don't need to be afraid of me. I won't come down hard on you. I just, I just remember I have this. Hello? Okay, there we go. All right, eight. You have spoken in my hearing, and I have heard your very words. You said, I am pure. I am without sin. I am innocent. I have no guilt. Ten, God is picking a quarrel with me, and he considers me his enemy. He puts my feet in the stocks and watches my every move. So Elu is saying that Job is saying these things, right? Uh, Twelve, but you are wrong, and I will show you why, for God is greater than any human being. So why are you bringing a charge against him? Why say he does not respond to people's complaints? So this here in verse 13, I want, I'm, you know, came to me. We make complaints to God, whether you know it or not. Right? And you think God's not answering. Right? Why say he does not, why say God does not respond to people's complaint? Because people do complain in different ways or form. Why was I born this way? Why is this happening to me? Why isn't that person not changing? Why do I got to go through this? Why is my life like this? And, and when you're asking these questions, you know, it's really, you're the, you're the, you're the, person that needs to figure out for yourself okay uh the answer because you're looking for an answer of you know like why why that person is in my life bothering me you know maybe you can answer it like, you can ask like that all right 14 for god speaks again and again though people do not recognize it okay god speaking to us constantly how? Oh, I don't hear God. Well, you don't have to hear God. He speaks, he's speaking to you constantly through circumstances, through other people, through creation, through many different things, through your life. Okay, He's speaking to you through your life. 15. He speaks in dreams. So some of you get this. In visions of night, when deep sleep falls on people as they lie in their beds. He whispers in their ears and terrifies them with warnings. Now, some of you got these, right? Some of you have been warned. Some of you have been shown hell. Some of you have been shown feelings of hell or death. 17. He makes them turn from doing wrong. He keeps, he keeps them from pride. He protects them from the grave, from crossing over the river of death. So, the, you know, Scripture is saying that He's protecting us. He warns us to protect you, right? He, he's doing, he's giving you, he's communicating in different ways. Dreams, visions, circumstances. 19, or, okay, or God disciplines people with pain on their sick beds with ceaseless aching in their bones. You know, if you get sick and you're in the deathbed, you're going to submit, trust me. I hope. Some people don't, of course, but... When you're at that point in life, God wants you to surrender. You're the boss, God. I, I surrender. They lose their appetite for even the most delicious food. 
Sometimes people complain, well, how come I don't get to eat that kind of food, right? Well, when you get to this place, food don't matter anymore, amen? 22 or 21, their flesh wastes away and their bones stick out. They are at death door and angels of death wait for them. But if an angel from heaven appears, a special messenger to intercede for a person and declare that he is upright. Now, you know, angel means messenger, so it doesn't, it doesn't have to mean like the heavenly angel. It can mean a person, an intercessor, your pastor, or someone who, your spouse, someone who's intercessing for you, right? And giving you prophetic words, prophecy, encouragement. The word of God, life, positive words. He will be gracious and say, rescue him from the grave, for I have found a ransom for his life. Then his body will become as healthy as a child. Child's firm and youthful again. When he prays to God, he will be accepted. And God will receive him with joy and restore him to good standing. 27. He will declare to his friends, I have sinned and twisted the truth, but it was not worth it. God rescued me from the grave, and now my life is filled with light. There's a cycle in the Bible, right? Sometimes, you know, today I was thinking, okay, you know, a lot of times I come up here and it sounds like doom and gloom. So everybody starts, got this constipation look after that. <laughs> I'm thinking, I need, a, I need a joyful message. If you look at the Bible though, right? The joy is at the end. All right? In the middle, okay? In the beginning, in the middle is, the beginning is law, all right? Now, if, I, if the law tells you you're a liar, you know, what are you going to do? Oh, 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 it's talking about me lying and stealing. All right? It's, it's to get you to repent. That's why the law is given. So the law or correction or discipline, however you want to uh, word it, it has to be given to you first so that you can be shown that you are doing something wrong. Not that you are a person of wrong, right? But we have to get you back into normal. This is not normal. If you were... You see, before in the Garden of Eden, before the fall, there was balance. There was health, there was peace, there was joy, there was righteousness. Your hormones, your, well, maybe we didn't, maybe it was different, right? Maybe we're, we were spiritual and flesh, so it's different from what it is today, right? And, and everything was, the earth, is, everything is in balance and in harmony, all glorifying and worshiping God. And so let's say like, you know, you were eating all organic, natural food, and it was normal. And then all of a sudden you got thrown into the candy store, right? And, and you start eating candy, it has some vitamins, yeah. So, and you're eating and it's, and it's, oh, this is really good, right? You eat it for generations. And that's what the food supply becomes, right? So the, 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 the candy, the refined sugar, the refined uh, the wheat, the refined grain, all this is ha throwing havoc in your body, right? Now your hormones are off, your gut is off, your brain is off, your chemicals are off, everything is off. Now we got problems, right? ADHD, autism, right? Uh, mental issues, anxiety, fear, all these things are like upon man. And all you got is a candy store still to go to eat to, right? And so we go to the doctor and they give you a pill and it has more side effects. Depression, suicidal, right? Fear, craziness, whatever, right? So you, you're just trading one sickness for another. And the reality is that it's a spiritual problem, yes, because it's demonic strongholds. You know, it's just, it's just this, de this demons, the strongholds is now manifested now in the physical realm. Now we have a name for it, right? ADHD, you know, whatever, you know, mental illness, 
You know, a lot of schizophrenic Christians are all schizophrenic. They hear voices, they talk to these voices. The homeless people talk to them, right? <laughs> Who are you talking to? I talk to Christians and I talk to schizophrenic Christians. And they actually believe they're talking to God. They believe they're talking to me, right? I'm like, what, I, what do you mean you're talking to me? Yeah, you know, we were talking to the Spirit, Pastor. No, we were not. I did not tell you to go on a fast, okay? So there's people who actually go on fast and they do these things because they think they're communicating in the spiritual realm. And sometimes they think they're speaking with me. I had this one lady I was communicating with and she said, Oh, I was speaking to you, Pastor Eugene, Bishop Kim, and, um, and, and some your church members. I'm like, what? <laughs> You're, oh, you're a schizo though, but you are, she is, you know, she's taking medicine to, for schizophrenic. And then she still thinks she's talking to people. I said, stop it. I said, you're not talking to anybody. Okay, I'll stop. I'll stop fasting. I guess I'll eat now. So, our, our system is messed up. And you're so ingrained into, because when you eat some, you know, when we eat sugar, whoa, it's like cocaine. That's what they said, okay? They say refined sugar is more addicting than cocaine. Now, some of you haven't taken cocaine, but I have tried. Long, long, long time ago, and I'm not recommending it, of course. Okay? But, but you know, um, they put sugar, they put gluten, they put all these things before his MSG and you, you know, you, ooh, you, know, it, it, you know, you like it and you think it's good and your body is changing, your mind is changing, everything is changing to this way and the healthy way, the normal way becomes alien. And so when you try to go back and eat healthy, it's like your body actually rejects it. But it's healthy. It's, it's just your body is now used to junk, right? And, and so you gravitate towards junk, thinking it's normal when it's not normal. So we have to gradually put you back to normal, right? And so we have to start how, you know, you have to, this is how we start. We say, get off the refined sugar, get off the refined flour, the grain, get off all that. It's impossible to get off all of it, yes, but at least get off the most of it. And you're going to have to exercise, okay? Exercise will clean out your body. Or you'll get sick. You're going to get sick. And you're going to get sick, your kid's going to get sick, and then you know what happens? We, most Christians, we just get mad at God. Why is this happening to me? You, your, your brain doesn't function right. You can't even sleep right, right? All this food is actually making you insomnia or you can't even have a good deep sleep. A lot of us, as you get older, what happens? You start waking up, right? One hour, two hour, three hour, you keep waking up. So there's some vitamin deficiencies in us. There's harmonic imbalance in us. And because we're not exercising, now your body's not really tired and you're full of sugar. And so when you try to sleep, you're like, right? Then you got the blue light going on. Yeah. And then you're like, I can't sleep. And then you wake up and go, now you're in a moody, right? You're in a mood and you're done. You're like, ah, you know, and then you have road rage. Can I tell you your story, Amia? She don't really have a story, but you know, she used to have road rage. I heard. She used to flip people off. She has a new way now. It's what she does when she gets a problem with a driver. She's improved from flipping someone off to... So she's better now. Next, I hope she'll go... Bless you, bless you. All right, that's, that's the next level we need to go to. God, you know, it's here, it says here in Job that God will put you to, on, the, on the sick bed to humble you. 
And when you're on that sickbed, you got to think, what is God trying to tell me? Maybe I'm too prideful, right? And so I got to get to this place to finally submit to Him. You're so, we're so full of sugar, we're so full of not only the physical junk in our body, you're full of the mental junk from watching the TV, the language, the, the, the innuendos of sexual innuendos, the prideful things that are being fed into your mind. And so when you meet the kingdom of God and the ways of God, you're going to naturally rebel. Why do I need to listen to you? Stop telling me what to do. I don't like being told what to do. You've been fed, you've been taught to be individual. You've been taught be your own person. That's not how kingdom of God works. Kingdom of God is you're a sheep, you are a herd, you follow the leader, Jesus Christ. In my neighborhood, I watch the cows. There's cows in my neighborhood, right? I was watching these cows. They're all walking in a line. They're following the leader. Most animals, if you watch, they just follow the leader, right? And, and sheep, sheep is not too bright, right? We're not too bright people. You're supposed to follow Jesus. Well, most of you don't know how to, well, most Christians out there don't know how to follow Jesus. So they have to follow a person who they can see. And that's why there's pastors. That's why there's churches. And, and it's a sad thing that a lot of, there's not a lot of good churches out there. But if you believe you're in the right church and you're following, if you, got, if you believe you're, you know, following the right leaders that God has placed over you, then you got to go all in. Or you got to find another church. Or you got to pray for that church. Those are your three options. Go all in or pray for your leadership because you think they're wrong. Or go somewhere else. Otherwise your life, you're risking your life. Right? You either got to know you're good or you're not. You can't just wait, wait it out. I was a Baptist for a very long time. And, when, when, and, and I believed once saved, always saved. And once, once this fire ministry came and, and showed me truth that, and you know what truth was for me? When truth, what was revealed is that most pastors will end up, most pastors have ended up in hell. That was truth for me. And that was enough for me because it made sense to me now. And I ran with it. I'm a person that if, God, if I know it's God and He tells me don't move and a train is coming, I'm not going to move. I, I have that type of personality. If I know it's God, I will not move and I don't care a train is coming or a storm is coming. Whether He slays me or I live, I will not move. The Bob, you know, Job said that too, whether God slays me or whether I live. I will listen to God. Maybe I got that because I read the Bible when I was young. In, in Michigan, when we thought it was God and God says, like, you know, your property will be sold, when there was no buyers in sight, right? But God was teaching us that we could be deceived. But when I thought it was God, we packed we told all the local church members that we were going to, I said, we're out of here this week, guys. There's no buyers, okay? We're out of here. God said we're going to be sold. And I said it with enthusiasm and confidence. I didn't know how it was going to be done. I just said, you know what? God said it. I just believe it. And I held my ground and nothing happened. Did I get mad at God? No. God said, you guys were deceived. I allowed it so you can learn. Thank you, God. If he did again, I will still not move. If he comes back to me and go, don't move, I will not move, even if a train's coming. I trust my God with all my life. Even if I've been deceived, and even though things didn't turn out what, how I wanted, I will still not move. Even I, you know... When, when, and even though we were deceived, there was still a buyer in the, in the pipeline and, and God was telling us that I'm going to get your property sold. And, and when the bank came first, I still 
would not let go, and I would still believe that God was going to rep, uh, uh, part the Red Sea and get the property sold and, and pay off my debts, and I would walk off in the sunset with a million dollars, right? Because that was the original plan. And when the bank came, I was like, I was still like, no, no, something, good, something great's going to happen, right? And I still believed it. And, and, and then six months later, you know, I got the letter that it got sold. Oh, you meant the bank was sending God. Oh, yeah. I didn't get mad at God. I'm like, oh, that's what you meant. Oh, I see now. You work differently than I was taught. You work differently, but the objective of where you want to take me, of how people teach us, that's the same, that he wants to get you out and raise you up. But the process is a lot different, right? And we had to wait a long time for things to... And we, we, you know, my kids slept on the floor. We lived in a, in a one-bedroom suite hotel. No money, all broke. My brother and my mom is, you know, mocking us. My mom is coming after my wife, and we had to endure all that still. And we're here today. And my wife and I never got angry at God. At least that I, I'm aware of, right? We didn't get angry like, no, what are you doing, God? You know, we didn't, we didn't do that, okay? And, I, and moving forward, I, I, I hope you guys don't do that, okay? When God corrected my wife and I, there was a few times where my wife thought about leaving this ministry. Everybody will go through that. And you know what she said to me? She said, when she was getting di disciplined by uh, uh, Bishop Kim, and, and we were being wronged, okay? We felt we were being wronged, and she told them. We, generally, we don't talk back or try to defend ourselves, but at that one point, she told them, this is what they did, and this is why we're doing this. And you know what he said? I know already. But he said to her in a harsh way, at least in her perception is harsh. Maybe to him, it was, he, he didn't think it was harsh. Sometimes when I deal with you, I don't think I'm being harsh. But you're going to think I'm harsh, right? Maybe I'm not really harsh, but you just think I'm harsh because you have all this baggage behind you because you were treated harsh. And I'm not saying I'm not being harsh, right? Maybe we're both wrong. But regardless... Even if I am, and even if Bishop Kim was harsh, even, if, even when Noah made a mistake, okay? When Noah made a mistake and got drunk, God went after his son. God didn't go after Noah. At least that's what the Bible shows us, right? And when God went after his son, it was a perpetual, gen, it went from generations down, a long time. Noah is, is you know, written as a, 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 a patriarch, right? He made a mistake, but God didn't hold him to that. His son's like, look, God, look, look. You can do that. God, look, look, look what the pastor's done to me. You can do that, perhaps. I don't know if it's going to work. I'm not saying I'm, I'm invincible, okay? I'm not saying any of that. But I'm just telling you how things work. I'm not perfect, okay? And I don't have the ability to be perfect. But God's going to use my imperfection also to refine you. And when you get chiseled by me through my imperfection then it's on you. And even my kids, right? I hurt my kids many times. Driving was very hard, teaching driving, you know, to Kalia. She got the brunt of it. You know, I tell Evelyn, I go, you got it easy. But it wasn't easy, of course. I was still a little bit like, eh. <laughs> right? I don't know if some of you taught your daughters or kids driving. It's not an easy thing, trust me. 
tired. And uh, and you know, I make I make Kalia cry a lot. That was like years ago, and you know, I'm like, oh, I can't control my. Even when I tried to tutor on math, that was so hard. She cried a lot. It gets easier for Evelyn, but she think it was still hard, right? And I said, no. I said, go talk to Kalia. Then it get, I'm sure, I hope it's easier for David, but I don't know. He's kind of sensitive. <laughs> he's, he's a lot sensitive than I expect. Regardless, I still got to change. See, I got to change still. I've said sorry to my kids many times. And they are being refined through my imperfection. They are being refined through my wife's imperfection. We have to learn to just forgive one another, even my own family. I have to, forg I have to forgive, you know, they have to forgive me. Sometimes we don't think we're doing wrong to each other, but it doesn't matter. We have to forgive one another. We have to move forward. And God will use that. And if you, if you, and if you handle it right, you will be broken. And the fragrance of the Lord will come from you. And you will be able to lead. And the, Lord, the Lord's light will shine from you. And when that shines from you, other men will see the good works of God in you. And they will be drawn by that. Even animals. Like Kalia's animals, they're drawn. Yeah. Or you can be an angry person because you got offended, and then you're gonna just repel people, and nobody's gonna go around you, and you're gonna get more mad because you think everybody's against you, and then eventually you're gonna get filtered out. You have to use these opportunities when you feel you've been wronged to look at yourself and just continue to allow God to break you. Now, my mom, I spoke yesterday. I said, you know, I can't change her. Well, she's semi-dementia. If you semi-dementia, I'll leave you alone, okay? But if you're not, you need to be changed. That's the bottom line. If you want to be over 80 like my mom and send my dementia and you want a free pass, I'll give you a free pass. I'll, I'll, let, I'll let God use you to refine me. But if you're, if you're sound mind, you need to change, amen? And the, and the change starts here, up here first, okay, in your mind. Some of you have been here a long time. It's time to really, you know, if you haven't really decided to go all in, you need to decide now. We're about to go into a new era. And it's going to be grand. I don't know, but it's going to be grand, okay? I feel it. It's going to be so grand. And some of you are just going to be watching on the sideline guy. That was grand. Rather than experiencing it. And I want you all to experience it, but you can't be afraid, right? You can't go hide in your little sin or, or get mad over little things. Be corrected and change. Amen? All right, we better stop there. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, God.